Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the One Marketing Thing podcast. And today we have a great show because we're going to be talking about dispelling digital marketing myths, common misconceptions of business owners. Hmm. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm Antoinette Blake, your host, and you're watching the One Marketing Thing podcast. Now, we started this podcast for digital marketers. We wanted to provide them with expert advice from industry veterans with decades of experience. And today, I have one of those experts. I have Mark Brooklyn. Yep, Mark is going to be discussing dispelling digital marketing myths, common misconceptions of business owners. Mark, Welcome to the One Marketing Thing podcast. But before we get into those misconceptions, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much, Antoinette. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Mark Brooklyn. I'm the owner of SEO Locale. We are a full service digital marketing agency. Our core competencies are search engine optimization and web design and development. But we do offer, of course, the full gamut of digital marketing. Uh, including paid search, social media, email marketing, et cetera. We're based out of Philadelphia. Uh, we're a team of 15, all local. I started SEO Locale by myself out of my apartment in Philly um, in summer 2017. Um, and it took me about a year, believe it or not, to convince my my longtime mentor and one of my best friends to join me uh, a year later. I guess he made me prove prove the concept before he would he would quit his job and join me so then it was us two and uh we grew it from there to about 200 clients uh, like i said about 15 employees we have an seo team content team web design team um so that's really us and we really our goal is to try and help as many small businesses as possible that's really who we try to work with and, you know, digital marketing is not new, but it may be new to a lot of uh, people that are just getting, uh, obviously getting started. And they've heard so much. I mean, they've mm -hmm. heard everything. So I want you to talk about some of those marketing myths, like those common misconceptions that can really tank them or discourage them from even going further. I think a big misconception is content is king. I think what people, you know, you see articles like that all the time, content is king, but what people mean is how impactful content can be for your website if you do it right. You know, you can't just go out and start cranking out thousands of blogs or go on ChatGBT now and just start cranking out blogs. You can't just start pushing out all this content without really going in, reading it, reviewing it. Um, adding your expertise to it. And that's the way that you can show search engines and users your value as a business. Um, and that's how you generate more traffic and increase your keyword ranking. So content is king is a very loose term that people throw around way too easily. That really bothers me. Um, and nobody really puts good uh, context behind what that actually means. And I love that, Mark, because I, I, when I first started, I said that, you know, content is king, let your audience wear the crown, let your customers wear the crown. And now I'm glad you brought up AI. You know, we're, we're, we're in, a, in a, a world of AI, but you have to be able to review and to provide content that is from your experience, right? Based on what you know is good, not just something that's been what regurgitated over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, it's quite literally part of, I'll just talk about Google since they're the monopoly that somehow gets mm -hmm. away with it. But since they're the monopoly, um, you know, they, they have their guidelines and standards as to what qualifies as quality content. You know, that you've probably heard of eat, uh, experience, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. So a, a, an AI is never going to be able to demonstrate all four of those concepts. You or myself or someone who's been in the industry for decades, that's the person who's going to be able to demonstrate that. So you might be able to utilize or leverage um, AI as a base or to give you topic ideas 
um, or something like that. But you have to be the one who takes ownership of that piece of content and make it your own and um, make it so that you are displaying those primary categories. Mark, let me take you back. Eats. Give me those. What's that acronym? What those? Uh, those acro that acronym stand for? Uh, experience, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. I love that. I love that. I was just talking about acronyms, how when you use acronyms, it really kind of helps to, to formulate those, those thoughts in your head. But I want to go back. You said something else. Google gets away with it. Okay. <laughs> Google gets away with it. That sounds kind of uh, deep. Come on. Well, I have, I have, with this? <laughs> I have some real problems with Google. Um, like I'm sure many people do. Um, well, what I mean, what I just meant is, you know, monopolies in our system aren't allowed to exist. Um, but Google literally is a monopoly. I mean, they own over 80% of the market. It's the definition mm -hmm. of a monopoly. Um, so I'm not, I guess the internet has different rules um, or something like that. Um but that's, you know, that's that's all, all I meant by the getaway. They get they seem to get away with a lot of things, although I have seen a lot of lawsuits come in Google's way these days mm -hmm. with exactly. privacy issues and cookie issues and on all kinds of different things. So what are your thought? You know, let's let's expound on that with with AI. I mean, you know, people are saying, well, AI is they're either of the thought it's going to take over the world or it's not going to take over the world. And it's like, no, it's not going to take over the world, right? It's just, that's not going to happen. So how does one use perhaps Google or AI to help them in their digital marketing career, but also to make it authentic, to keep it authentic? I'm really glad you, you asked that. So what I, what I mean when I say, you know, you can't just start using AI is you should absolutely use it as a tool. It's mm -hmm. incredibly smart. It's incredibly fast. We incorporate it into a lot of our processes. Um, it can save so much time on so many different things. So it's absolutely a platform that SEOs and probably most people everywhere should be welcoming with open arms and leveraging to whatever capacity it can, it can offer. I mean, this thing can literally almost build a website by itself. Almost, mm -hmm. not quite. But not can quite, come, right. can come pretty close. So, you know, the power that this thing that this thing has, um, I mean, it seems limitless. And I do think that we are that we're on the way of somebody figuring out how to make AI neurological where it can actually think instead of just trying mm. to pull resources from everything. And that's going to be a crazy, scary time. It might not be in in my lifetime, but I, I I think it'll it'll get pretty close to that. Um, and so yeah, I mean, you can use um, AI for content creation. You can use it to help you create uh, catchy uh, sales pitches or uh, mm -hmm. sales slogans. You know, like catchy one liners. We use it specifically to help us generate different meta titles or descriptions, different headlines in our content. Um, you you can help it um, organize your messaging in an email marketing campaign. So I, there's so many different ways that anyone can use it. Those are just some of the few ways that we leverage it. Um, I mean, it's a really powerful tool. And I love the, the key word here is tool. It is a tool. It should be one tool in your marketing kit. It should not be the one all be all, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, every everyone has, all, all marketers have lots of tools that they use. And the reason you have all these different tools is because they can do one thing that makes your job easier or make you do your job better, but none of them do your job. Uh, if they did the job, they wouldn't need to pay you to do it. So, you know, they're all just tools that help you be better at what you can provide. That is great. Yeah. I was sitting here and I'm taking notes because, you know, it. Social media, uh, digital marketing, it literally changes overnight, right? Literally, we wake up and Threads is here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it's like, now you have to, you know, learn that. And, and, and I say that to say, what frightens me is those marketers that say they're gurus or experts. And I'm like, how can you be a guru or an expert when it literally changed overnight? 
Yeah, I mean, on average, Google is changing their algorithm eight times a day. Um, most of the time, you don't feel it, you don't realize it. Sometimes they roll something out to test and they roll it back at um, roll it back. Um, so there are so many changes and it's so hard to stay on top of everything. But really, as long as you're following the main guidelines of what you're supposed to be doing, you're probably going to be okay no matter what changes are going on. That's where we try to steer in. Um, you know, sometimes you might teeter into that gray area of white hat and black hat SEO. Um, but, you know, those issues will be later issues that you're going to have to address. That's a risk that you're that you're willing to take. Um, so for, you know, for the most part, um, it's pretty obvious or it should be obvious at least what is okay and what is not okay. Well, I'm glad that you're okay and you've been in this business for a minute because, you know, it is, it's difficult. And I'm glad that your partner said, Hey, you know, Mark is on to something. <laughs> I, I I know. I thought, I didn't think it would take so long to convince them, but what a, go figure. Well, you know, it, digital marketing and social media, you know, I, I've been around for a minute with people. It's still very, uh, scary for a lot of people you know they they still mm -hmm. think it's a, a fad like it's gonna go away and it's like no that's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah you know soon it, so eventually it's gonna get to the point where um you know the generation who has ex embraced and grew up with social media really starts to leverage it so i really don't think that this industry is only going to continue to grow even more than it already has over the last 15 years where it really has exploded. Definitely. And as, I, as a boomer, I am enjoying it. I'm just loving um, it because it keeps my mind active and it keeps me, you know, growing. And, and, and so I'm loving it because I, I was of the generation where they said that the, the boob tube would, the boob tube would rot our brains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can, I can understand that. And that the, you're the kind of people who we appreciate because it just makes our conversation so much easier. And you know what? This was a great conversation, Mark. I truly appreciate you dropping these gems for our digital marketers, because again, there are so many myths out there and misconceptions, but you know, I'm, I'm glad that you, you know, you were able to give us some, some good gems. And I want you guys to know that if you want to connect with Mark, we have a lot of information on him, but you can always send an email to editor at passionatemarketers.com. So Mark, thank you so very much for just giving us a few minutes of your time today to share some myths and misconceptions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. And we also want to thank our sponsor, Propel, right? Propel is a unique reviews management platform. They do automation that helps small business owners turn those website visitors into customers. So we want to thank Mark and we want to thank Propel. And I want to thank you for tuning in and listening to the One Marketing Thing podcast.